Conversation by Julie Benetti and Susan Barbaro is a production of EI Publishing in association with EI Alliance, copyright 2018. Visit eipublishing.com for more. Music for this series is courtesy of New Threads, copyright 2018, from their self-titled album, Available Now. This is Julie Benetti, and I'm here with Susan Barbaro, and we're continuing our conversation, As a Man Thinketh, because we think there's a little bit more to share, at least, you know, something there that we didn't quite express the first time around, because the first time around is like reading something once, and then when you read it the second time, you go, oh... I just think I that we're that going part. deeper. This is like 102. That was James Allen 101. <laughs> this is 102 because we always go deeper and we decided to share this podcast instead of turning it off and do it ourselves. Right. And we would have continued the conversation yeah. going on. And I, I think some of that, the, the, the stuff I want to look at is, is some of the expression was that, you know, it's meaningful today. I thought that was funny. There's a funny comment in the introduction. It's meaningful today as much as it was 100 years ago. And that some of his ideals have not been realized in modern times. And this was written, what, was 1908? Or was it 1908? I'm getting my I dates think mixed in mixed 1902, up. he started okay, writing things. Okay. So it was I think early it was 1900s. somewhere, yeah, early 1900s. And can I just throw this yes. in before you get there? They have now in a book that came out subsequent <laughs> as a woman thinketh. Jeez, I guess they knew the Me Too movement was coming. I guess so. That's funny. Um, there's there's also, I think, a really important thing and to drill down into is that we have the key to every situation. And a lot of times, you know, we talked about in the first pot, pot, uh, podcast that our experience is to externalize and kind of communicate with what what's externally occurring and then kind of deflecting it back to ourselves And sometimes you get caught in the dysfunction of that and you get caught in the dysfunction of everybody around you who's in that. And to me, it seemed very simple that he was just presenting in a very deep way that we have the key to every situation based in our thoughts and our thoughts creating our character and our actions. And if we fell into unhealthy thoughts, of course, that's where we would go. And there's something even deeper to that, to go back to, you know, the seed of those thoughts and to go back to, you know, why we would go in that direction and not in a direction that was healthier for us. So I think, um, so to your point, because I don't even know what you're going to talk about. So I'm just responding. So, (laughs) So, you know, the the first thing that I thought of is when you said that we have all the answers within ourselves. Well, of course, it only makes sense because we're creating it and we somehow within ourselves know where we're going. And and so if I'm going to say I want to learn how to make a lot of money, well, based on my beliefs, I'm going to create my thoughts. So either I'm going to do one of two things. Or one of, I mean, there's probably 10 million things that can be done, but let me just make it very simple. This is my interpretation. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying this is the answer. But if I, I, you know, come here and I want a lot of money, I'm going to do it. Either I'm going to start off very poor because that's going to show me the way how to get there. I'm going to take that route. Or I'm going to take the route of, I'm just going to go to school and I'm going to learn and I'm going to study and I'm going to watch and I'm going to emulate. And I'm, it's going to be whichever based on the beliefs of right. who's around me. Right. Because when you come, I believe when you come in this world, your beliefs start to create the how. I know I'm using the word how again. I don't know how to say this. It's, you start to create the path that you understand we all understand our habits that are comfortable to us. So I would question, is that really the how, though? If your beliefs are creating the how. Because that, when you were giving that great um, analogy, I was thinking, you know, I was just kind of pondering simply and going, okay, so basically he's saying if you plant beans, you're going to get ble- beans. Mm-hmm. And if you plant beans... And your intent and your presence and your focus and your isn't in the planting of the beans, you might get beans that don't taste so great. And and the the simplicity of 
sometimes it's almost like screwing around with your, your mind a little bit who's create, you know, where the thoughts are coming from and entering in really simple and saying, you got that because you planted beans. If you didn't want beans, then why did you plant beans? And I go to... And and the reason mm-hmm. why, I'm sorry, the reason why I, I went to, you know, the planting, because mm-hmm. we talked about in the, the first, in the first podcast where we said, he says, thoughts are the seeds. Mm-hmm. And then the plant that comes out is, you know, the action. That's what springs forth. You know, it's and it's almost like you, you're almost like a robot following in that that order. And then, you know, whatever flowers that blooms, if you think of a plant, is the joy or the suffering that occurs. And so everything that occurs is what you're orchestrating. And so, so if you're looking outside going, why did that happen to me? What Well, so what do you, you think? You did it. So so what would what would make the difference between getting beans that taste amazing or beans that don't taste so amazing? What would make you think? Well, I think it would, would be, be the, I think it would be how you 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 know watered your thoughts, okay. how you fertilized your thoughts. And so, what would be the fertilizer? And so, if you stayed in the presence of of being all upset about certain things that occurred in your life and how people were acting or not acting and what situations and circumstances and how could they do this to me? I mean, you, you can see right now you're going down like a roller coaster of not great thoughts. You're not really governing, as he says, what was that quote? We are our own master. We can misgovern the household or not. And so you're kind of misgoverning the household. And whatever you do to flip it, to, to get in there and go, wait, I'm misgoverning the, ho- misgoverning the household. I, I, need to, I need to clean it up. I need to go in there and clean it out a bit. And, and go back to, you know, as we said in the first podcast, just the right thinking that he talks about. And so how would you go about changing the misgoverning of the host? Because the, the part about the quote that I love is everything's great. The house runs great until something happens, until something goes wrong. And that's when, you know, the cream rises and the garbage falls, you know. And at that point is usually when the majority of people tend to misgovern. You know, everything's great, everything's wonderful, everyone gets paid, and then the minute something happens, then you go in and you kind of misgovern. That's when the misgovernment of the of the household. That's why I love that quote. Yeah. And and so part of um so my question would be is is <laughs> is what would I don't, I'm trying to figure out how I would even put the question into words, because I, so so when you, when you're in the midst, I, I'm just going to say of a crisis, and you're starting to misgovern, how do you pull yourself out of it? How do you notice it? How would you notice it? The impression I got from from reading, and I mean, I know there's certain things I do, but. You know, sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. The impression that I got from reading what James Allen was sharing was that we're always our own masters. So the awareness of that, it's in the strong state and the weak state. I mean, so in both dualities, it's always us. It's always us. So when you're kind of pointing fingers out there and saying, oh, it's because of this that happened, it's because that that happened, I think going, I think going back to that state of it's always us because there's another element right around that quote that we keep saying we are our own master. You misgovern the household or not. He says that you discover the law of thought within you. And I think the word discover is beautiful. When we discover the law of thought within us, don't we come to some awareness? I think that's the vibration I'm getting because he, he, he goes further to say you apply yourself, you do self-analysis, you, you look at your experiences. He doesn't go on and on because that's, once again, a projection. But, you know, it's, it's a within thing. And I think taking that step of getting going back within is just really powerful, for lack of a better word. It's, again, it's, so here we go, the buzzwords, it's empowering yourself, it's inspiring yourself. And so whatever you need to do to, to trigger that to occur. So you're saying it's a trigger. So it's interesting. That's where I was. So it's like the misgovernment. It's only you realize that you're not in alignment through the misgovernment. You only recognize you're not in alignment through suffering. And you just said when you're triggered, 
And so that's that's kind of where I was trying to go with that. And so I think I think I go to trigger because then I go into habit because a, a lot of I mean we all know people and sometimes we've been the people who are like oh my gosh this is occurring it's occurring and if you don't I, I mean sometimes you can plot stuff and see patterns that it's occurring again and again and again. So that's true. And here's the thing that I found most people are unaware of habits some yeah if you you know certain things we know but you know if you talk to an alcoholic mm. getting an alcoholic to get treatment isn't easy to say hey guess what you know joe you, you know you're you're an alcoholic and it's like what it's like uh yeah you need to get help 90 percent of the time they're going to say no i'm not an alcoholic mm. i i just I, we, we were joking about this i just like to go out and have fun with my friends no you're an alcoholic so it's it's an easy thing for an I'm going to say it for an outsider to look and say oh yeah I can see so and so's problem and so and so's problem, but to be able to flip it and look at yourself and find those hidden habits because a lot of times even our own hidden ha- our own hidden habits we keep from others. Because mm. so that's why I say, from an external standpoint, it looks like X is going on with someone's life, and we really have no idea. We have mm. no idea, mm. even though you say, you know, the environment. You can see what happens in their environment. We still have no idea. Mm. I use the you know the example I gave of the IRS. It can look like, oh, gee, she's gotten screwed by the IRS. No, I didn't. And I told the story about being in hold and then the woman just hung right. up on me. Right. You could sit there and say, wow, she really, the IRS really zinged her. But the truth of the matter is in this situation, they didn't. But it, from the outside, it looks like that. So it's funny because this is where I veer off a little bit because where I veer is, is I get the sensation from this book that it's a, it's a completely internal book. So even when he says, you can tell by, um, I think we expressed this or I expressed this in the first one. He says, you can tell when you see a situation with someone, you know, you, you can see if they have godlike character, beast like character, you can know their thoughts. And, and I think and, he, what, and, and, and from that, the reason why I gave that example is because for me, at least when I'm when I'm reading this and I'm absorbing this and trying to get, you know, with him sitting there beside me kind of with the energy, trying to trying to feel what he was presenting. I get the sensation of him saying that as an, an analogy from my own thoughts. And it's not to kind of look and say, okay, I get what's going on with that person. And I get what's going on with that person. I get, it's not that at all. Well, because we and have no way of veer, doing it. Right, he we says don't. you can't. And so, but that's what we all do. Exactly. And that's what we all do. And and, and when realizing that that shot back at you like a looking glass exactly. defines, you know, that, that element of the seed and the thought and the action and what blooms from it. And yet it. we're all comfortable being able to look at someone else and, and know their story. We know their story. And yet the truth of the matter is we have no idea on anyone's story. Right. And yet, you're right, His his this is about self-analysis, I'll call it that. It is not about looking outside and how to see things different. It really is looking inside that to mine, you're, you're, you mine and in, in, you go inside to mine. You right. don't go outside to mine. Right. You mine in, even physically when you're mining, you go inside. And so, so, so I think to answer a little bit of your question, which was probably three questions ago, which I can't repeat about, you know, the, the how, I think the trigger of, of saying, oh, I know what's going on with him is the, the flashback habit that, that, that brings you back to wait. It's about, you know, circumstances I'm creating for right. myself. So you want to go to another level. What do you really want to say, Julie? What do you really want to say? I know there's something else you want to say. So I think that's just a real powerful presence standpoint. Because when you when you remove all the external, and I get we're here and we're, you know, there are people around us and people have issues and all that kind of stuff. But that's even a funny explanation of it, because even when you read this book, that's not what he's expressing. And and when he's saying, as a man thinketh, you know, it's, it's not as a man thinks about everybody out there and the state of the world and everything going on. It's really 
really going to the power within yourself, going to the source within yourself. And wouldn't that be the real work of life? Mm -hmm. And wouldn't that support the idea that searching for something external, and we've heard it from many people who have been very successful, is that power, money, uh, fame, fortune doesn't satisfy that that need, I'll say, within within us. Yet, when you go inside, wouldn't that support the idea that that's really the goal of life and the goal of what oneself is, is to master oneself. And that doesn't mean you control yourself because you can't control things. Yet, as he says, you can, man, man cannot control his environment. Uh, what does it say? There's a great quote he has. Man cannot control... Oh, man cannot directly choose his circumstances, but he can choose his thoughts. And so indirectly, yet surely, shape his circumstances. And nature helps every man to the gratification of the thoughts he most encourages. And opportunities are presented which will most speedily bring to the surface both the good and evil thoughts. And it's like, you know, once you start doing it, it's nature will, of course... Nature, he uses the word nature, we talk energy, will support that. And wouldn't that really, at the end of the day, if, if we can't understand what anyone else out there is thinking, because we don't, we can't, we can't control that. We're not ever going to understand that. Yet we can come to some understanding about ourselves. And I think that's why people go to psychics. I think that's why people go to doctor. People go because they want to learn more about themselves. And yet, the most authoritative person would be yourself. Right. And so when you go outside to learn about yourself, I mean, that's that's what occurs. There's a wonderful quote he has, because it, it is funny. All of what you said relates to, you know, the exercise of, you know, like I have to change the situation out there. I have to do something, you know, and that when it's, when in actuality, it's coming back to going right within. And he has this beautiful line that he says, you cannot travel within and stand still without. Exactly. And so, you know, something's mm-hmm. going to occur and change right. because you travel within. And that's nature. It's not the other way saying, around. Nature is going to support, and we use the word energy to support exactly that. But I mean, if you really, I mean, how would you, how would you even translate that sentence? You cannot travel within and stand still without. I mean, how would you translate? It's just what he said about nature is that if you have, you, you're traveling within the evil thoughts or the good thoughts are going to come forward. And of course, they're going to manifest outside. And the more you change yourself and the more that you work towards mastering your thoughts, you don't even have to touch outside. Right. I mean, you, you do Plus, because as you tend to, it's like if you want to, you know, if you want to be healthy and you, you start having the thoughts of being healthy, you're going to exercise more. You're going to eat healthier. You're going to do things that are better for yourself by default because that's where your thoughts lie. Right. And, and just in being in the thought of that, of course, you're going to become healthier. And that's tending your garden Ex- inside. Right. And and for me, you cannot travel within and stand still without. It, there's just something amazingly comfortable in that sentence when it's completely filled with, I'm mean, going to say, uncertainty and, and possibility. And yeah, but that's when he purpose. says you keep, you know, well, the mm-hmm. purpose, funny word again. So yet he keeps his focus one Mm -hmm. keeps one's focus Mm -hmm. and that is despite whatever else occurs you 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 keep your focus right and that's where he's in this the part that i love that he says is it's not easy it's a constant struggle right and 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 struggle is a funny word is because of course we and he you know i'm not going to quote again because you're gonna it's (laughs) like but the thing is is that if you don't Go ahead. I know you're, oh, she, you're going he, uh, back and forth. Oh, you're just, oh you. because e- <laughs> even even with the sentence where he presents it in a negative, it's it's beautiful because you know you're without is going to change and move just because you travel within. I mean, I know I keep harping on that, but it, but it's just wonderful because you might feel like nothing's going to happen if I work on myself. If I do, you know, I mean, why would you feel that way? 
Well, I mean, all you have to do is look at your own history and mm -hmm. your thoughts have become truths to you. Mm -hmm. So therein lies, I mean, there's your proof if one's looking for proof. Mm -hmm. And so why wouldn't you take that? And, and, and you know, the only thing I was, oh, this is what I was going to say, is the problem is that we look for instant change. You know, I was I was watching a show the other day on uh, the Nazi, uh, um, what do you call it, the Nazi hunters. And it talked about this one guy and his name was Simon Wiesenthal. Uh, Simon Wiesenthal and he was a Nazi hunter and he survived I don't know how many camps you know mm -hmm. and, and then you know the end of the war in 1945 he he started he found some of them in 1971 there was the story and I'm not going to go into it you can watch it it's fascinating but you know I thought of the resolve of this person from 1945 and some of these horrible horrible things that they that these people did that ran some of these camps it's 25 years later Mm. And and I think part of the, the th thing that's fascinating in, in, about it is that he had to keep that resolve for 25 years. Mm. And most of us say we change our thoughts or whatever. And then we say, OK, tomorrow things didn't change. So what the heck? We, we don't have the patience to stick with it. We do it for a very short period of time. And then we say, well, what the heck? We didn't get what we wanted. And I think that's a little bit of, you know, social media. You do it. Did, we get a, did you get a look? Did you get a like? Did you? And I think that has a lot to do with it is this a, a lack of patience that keeps us from, a current, from really. And that's a really interesting place to go because the metrics aren't outside. The metrics are never outside. I mean, eventually it, it, it changes because of you being within, but then you just blend. I mean, that blends for you. So the metrics being outside aren't giving the presentation. You know, it, it, if you're looking for that to confirm that, okay, I've been working on myself within for a month or two. Has anything changed? That's not a fair metric. Well, so you know what it's like? I'm going to, you know, it's like someone who goes on a diet. They go on a diet. I use usually that because that's something I think is <laughs> yeah. easy to relate to. That's the only reason I use it. But, you know, if you, you go on a diet for a week and you don't lose any weight, and it's like, well, what the heck? And then the issue is, is that you, you can't go on a diet. You have to change your lifestyle. You right. have to be active and you have to eat right. And that's like an ongoing thing. It's not a, that's what I say. There's no destination. It's like, okay, think good thoughts, think good thoughts. Oh, wow, look, a great thing's yeah. happened. Now I can go back to the old way of thinking. But you probably didn't tend the garden again. Inside, but he, he right? goes in and he says, Vic this is another quote, and, and this is the second time, so I'm going to read it. And he says, victories attained by right thought can only be maintained by watchfulness. Many give way when success is assured and rapidly fall back into failure. Hmm. And And I think what happens is, you know, is, is part of that is that we, we look for the quick fix and we think, okay, I'm going to change my mind. And I, the thing that I used when I was watching the documentary about it was the resolve. I mean, most of the, you know, of this Nazi hunters show, it was fascinating. And I was just like, wow, 25, 30 years later, he's still searching for some of them. And it's like, you know, and there's, I think there's some dysfunction in that. Of course, I mean, there's the getting even blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to go into that. But I will say the resolve of 25, 30 years, 30 years, mm. you know, that's, that's, that's what I think a lot of us don't stay with. Right. We give up before it's too soon. And sometimes it's hard to do because we don't know. Is things going to change in a week, in a day, in a year? I mean, we always joke about that. It could be tomorrow. It could be next week. And, and the sad part about that part of it of, you know, when you see the circumstances and you feel like nothing changed and you look out there and you're looking for metrics, you just kind of put the kibosh on, you know, all those great thoughts you had because the circumstances yeah. grow out of thought. So you just created another domino layer, right. onion layer right. of, of crap over yep. all the good stuff you were doing. And yep. so what's the remedy to that? Sure. Not look outside for the metrics because exactly. the metrics now are even being fudged. Yep. So there are, you know, what are you, what are you looking for that's, that's true out there when there's a lot that's so much that's fake and the circumstances grow out of thought? So it's interesting. So the way that I look at this book is it, it really comes down to, you know, number one, you look at yourself and you look for the hidden habits or beliefs that you've been harboring that maybe you were unaware of and how you find them. 
You know, you, you got to do some soul searching. Again, our book really hits everything and it, and it gives you an opportunity to go through and look at every aspect mm. of your life and who you are and what you believed and the people around you and blah, 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 blah. And the focus is not blaming anyone. It's not about blame. It's about correcting. It's like correcting. If someone's, you get a golf swing and someone says you're doing this wrong, it's not to come in and yell at you. It's just, oh, let me fix it then. And that's what the goal is. And then to keep that focus and you can, and, and like you said, the metrics or looking for validation, that's a, that's a killer because it's that doesn't always, work. Yeah. yeah it supersedes, it's never, right. Mm -hmm. It supersedes your, your own thought that you work so hard at, at uh, tending and gardening. So read the book. Mm -hmm. um, and As a Man Thinketh As by man. James Allen. And uh, have fun with it. It's, it's, it's a fascinating read. And actually, each sentence, we could sit here and take each word apart. Yes. And, and uh, so it's, it's, very, it's very potent. Very potent and very fun. Thanks for joining us. This has been a production of EI Publishing in association with EI Alliance. Listen to other episodes and visit eipublishing.com to find more energized podcasts and books. Find New Threads self-titled album, New Threads, on iTunes, Spotify, Bandcamp, or at newthreads.us. Thank you for listening.